Snestron? All right, let's take a look at every Super Nintendo game based on an action movie. And by action movie, I mean big, dumb, meat-headed action flicks starring people like Arnold, Sly, Sigourney Weaver, Van Damme, and uh, Ray Liotta? Just for the record, I'm not including stuff like The Mask or Hook or Cool World because while they may have action elements, they're not really action movies, so to speak. Also, I'm not including the Star Wars games since those are kind of in their own category and should really get their own video someday. And I'm also not including the Batman games either since those are more than just action flicks. They're Batman flicks. And besides, I've already done a video on those. Also, an important distinction here is that I'm restricting this to games based directly off of movies. So for example, Jurassic Park Part 2 The Chaos Continues doesn't count because while it's based on a movie franchise, the game itself isn't based on a specific movie, if that makes sense. And there's also stuff like Blues Brothers, which is just a generic platformer that has nothing to do with the movie. That game sucks anyway. So let's start with Three Ninjas Kick Back. Yeah, I guess this is technically an action movie, and this isn't that bad of a game, really, but it's one of those trial and error type of action platformers that are referred to as pick up and die games. You pick the game up, you play it, and you die 20 times in 5 minutes. No saves or passwords either. The main thing this game has going for it is that it's two player co-op, but the difficulty here doesn't make this one worth it. You can find better elsewhere. Alien 3 is a pretty dang good game. You start immediately with a flamethrower, a machine gun, and a grenade launcher, and you're making aliens go boom. You can't argue with that. You access a terminal here, and you've got a list of missions to select from, and it lets you access the map of the entire facility so you can plan how you can get there. The missions are usually just stuff like rescuing prisoners. Alien 3 looks and sounds awesome for a single player run and gun game. There's passwords here too, unlike the last game. I will say this game gets kind of boring and repetitive. The level design here is pretty generic, so there's not much meat on the bone here, so to speak, but it's still pretty good for what it is. Next there's Cliffhanger, and this is as generic as it gets. Sure, it follows the movie, if you care about that sort of thing, but this is paint-by-numbers beat-em-up stuff that plays very slowly, and there's about three dozen beat-em-ups I'd rather play than this. The game tries to go for some variety with these climbing stages, but you're just a sitting duck because you move so slowly. Avoid this game. Now with Cutthroat Island, this is the right way to do a generic movie based beat em up. It moves at a much faster pace, there's lots of special moves, and it's two player co op, so this game is halfway decent. The only problem is when the game tries to do levels other than beat em up stuff, like this minecart thing where you have less than a split second to dodge stuff in front of you, it's pretty annoying. But yeah, Cutthroat Island isn't terrible. Next there's Demolition Man. This one is hit or miss. It's a single player side scrolling run and gun style game with some top down 8 directional action levels mixed in. So it's kind of like a cross between Alien 3 and True Lies. This is decent enough, but the big problem is how freaking small the enemy gunfire projectiles are. You'll drop dead out of nowhere and wonder what the hell hit you. The game starts out forgiving with extra lives and health, but eventually gets pretty hard. Demolition Man is pretty good all things considered, but it's not really worth going out of your way to play. Dragon the Bruce Lee story is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and if you were around back then, you'll remember that these games were frigging everywhere, kind of like the first-person shooters of their time. So yeah, this game is pretty generic, nothing about it is going to stand out from the pack, other than that it follows the story of the movie, so this one is really not worth it. Hunt for Red October plays like a shoot 'em up except in a submarine underwater. You're given a limited amount of missiles, torpedoes, and depth charges that you have to manage accordingly. Complete the level and you get access to a bonus level that switches to a first person perspective that's compatible with the Super Scope 6. Again, not to sound like a broken record, but this game is pretty dang generic. It's not bad, but it's not exactly worth going out of your way to play. Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures is an interesting case because it's not based on one particular movie. It combines parts of the first three Indiana Jones movies. This one was made by the same people who made the Super Star Wars games, so it can be pretty brutal and unforgiving, like getting chased by the giant boulder here is completely trial and error. You have to memorize the pattern before you can get by, and you will die a lot. Still, if you're a fan of the movies, you'd really enjoy Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures. Judge Dredd feels a bit like a more polished version of Demolition Man. It's the same sort of thing, but with more interesting environments and just more going on in general. I like that the game keeps stats, that's pretty cool. You can either blast enemies or just deem them as guilty and they're whisked away and you want to do this to earn points, I guess? This is a perfectly okay game, it's just the level layout can be pretty confusing at times, it's always tough to notice these ladders. But yeah, Judge Dredd is an okay-ish action platformer. 
Jurassic Park is a pretty infamous game for a couple reasons. It's a top-down action game where you go around collecting eggs and opening gates so you can travel around the island. But anytime you enter a building, you go into a first-person perspective, which was almost unheard of for a Super Nintendo game at the time. The big flaw here, though, is that there's no battery save and no passwords at all, so you'd have to beat the game in one sitting. That's pretty ridiculous. This game was pretty interesting for its time, but if you want to play it today, you gotta play it with save states. And we're right back into boring, slow, poorly made beat-em-ups with Last Action Hero. As one of the four or five people on Earth that love this movie, this is pretty disappointing. I mean, is that supposed to be Arnold? It looks closer to Shane McMahon. Yeah, this game is terrible, even by beat-em-up standards. The action is slow, the enemies take forever to kill, and it's just a chore to play through. Avoid this game. Next there's Lawnmower Man, now here's a change of pace. This game is bad in a totally different way than the other bad games in this video. Not only is it an ordinary side-scrolling shooter with one-hit deaths, but you transition to these weird first-person flying stages that have delayed controls. If you have enough patience, you can eventually get to a rail shooter stage that's like something out of Hyperzone. But overall, Lawnmower Man suffers from bad controls and bad enemy design. I'd avoid this one. Next is Lethal Weapon, and this game is actually decent. There's a series of missions you can complete in any order, like rescuing hostages or defusing bombs, and you start the game as Riggs, but if you die, Murtog takes over. That's kind of cool. Bear in mind that this game is single player only, though. The graphics here are pretty lousy, I mean this looks like an NES game. Still, this game is an okay playthrough. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had a few games on the Super Nintendo, but one in particular was based on the movie. And this is one of the better games on this list. It's a two-player co-op beat-em-up. There's lots of special moves, but the key that makes this one good is how fast-paced it is. Compare this with something like Cliffhanger. This one moves along much quicker, and as a result is much more entertaining. Definitely check this one out. And of course, if you're a fan of the series, you'll enjoy this that much more. For some reason, a mediocre movie titled No Escape got a game release, and uh, if you're confused why this got a game associated with it, I'm right there with you. I was there, and I have no memory of this movie. Anyway, this game is bullshit. It's typical trial and error stuff that has pits formed beneath you as you run, your attacks suck, your jump sucks. It's just a plain bad 2D action platformer. Avoid this game. Robocop 3 is another action platformer, as you might expect, and it plays a lot like Robocop vs. Terminator, only a lot slower. If you're looking for a Robocop game, you're better off with that one, particularly on the Sega Genesis. Robocop 3 isn't bad, there's all sorts of different weapons you can use and all that. There's nothing particularly offensive here, it's just slow and boring, you can find much better. Stargate plays a bit like Super Star Wars. It's got the same kind of action platforming, the same kind of pacing, the same projectile weapon, the same stages where you fly around in a mode 7 stage and shoot stuff, and the same ridiculous difficulty. If you haven't played Super Star Wars, you're better off with that one, but if you have and you're looking for more, then you should check out Stargate. The Terminator franchise spawned three games on the Super Nintendo. First, we have a game based on the first movie, simply titled The Terminator. Another side-scrolling run-and-gun game, but this one is just freaking impossible. I can't even get past the first level, not only because it's so tough, but because it just never ends. I mean, is this the entire game right here? Yeah, I'd avoid this game. Then we have Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this is one of the worst games on the Super Nintendo. The controls are mangled, the hit detection is awful, the game looks bad even for an NES title, let alone an SNES game. And seriously, that's my jump? That's how the Terminator jumps? This game is like Wizard of Oz, Bebe's Kids level bad. Stay the hell away from this one. The third SNES Terminator game is T2 the Arcade Game, and what you see is what you get here. It's a gallery shooter, and you use your D-pad to move your sight around and kill everything that moves. The thing that this game has going for it is that not only is it compatible with the Super Scope 6, but it also works with the SNES mouse. So if you're able to play it with either one of those, this game could be fun, but with a regular controller, it's not that great. Time Cop is a really confusing game. Presumably it's based on the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, but they put Cyclops on the cover? What? That's pretty clearly Van Damme in the game too. But yeah, as you can see, this is one of those games with rotoscoped photorealistic characters, so it looks interesting, but the game plays very stiff and clunky. Anytime you do an attack, you gotta wait for the animation to play through to completion. It just gets old. I'd avoid this game. 
True Lies is an awesome top-down 8-directional shooter that has you use shotguns, grenades, and Uzis to kill bad guys and blow up all sorts of stuff. Longtime viewers of this channel have heard me prattle on about this game long enough, so I'll keep it short here and say this game is fantastic and well worth seeking out and playing today. The controls are easy to get the hang of, the visual design here is great, and it's got Tom Arnold. What else could you possibly want? Last we have Waterworld. This one was only released in PAL regions. Surprisingly, this game starts as a shoot 'em up You sail around aimlessly shooting everything that moves until you're told to go to a diving buoy where you swim underwater collecting as much stuff as you can until you run out of oxygen. Then you're back on a boat shooting stuff until the game tells you to go somewhere else. It's all very confusing. I will say the music in this game is surprisingly really cool. It's easily the best part of the game, but otherwise I'd avoid Waterworld. Whew, okay, that's it for action movie games on the Super Nintendo. If I had to pick the best games in this video in no particular order, I'd go with True Lies, Alien 3, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, and Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures, with the biggest surprise here being Cutthroat Island, which is actually a decent co-op game. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.